Hey, hey, what's going on? So I'm going to go over a quick overview of the chart discovery method. Here we're going to talk about exactly a good a good process that's really helped me streamline my closing structure on the beginning of the discovery call, making sure you have everything framed in the way you need to to move that to move that call, that sales call you have forward with that prospect, essentially. That way you're not missing anything. You have key elements in here. And it's just a little acronym that really helps me out. So uh, overall, it, it's called the chart method for various reasons. So basically what the whole goal here, as you can see right here, is to streamline the approach of the discovery call. This framework walks through the lens of prospects, problem, and step-by-step -step sequence that's easy to implement and remember. So chart, here's what it stands for. C, complaint. H, for history. A, for assessment. R, for reframe. T, for treatment. Now, obviously, I came from a medical background on doing 911, doing the medic stuff. The chart is something that we used in that area to help us make sure we knew what was going on, what we were going to do for the problem, for whatever the situation was. So, so starting off with the complaint, this is typically going to be known as your actual problem. You'll find this out usually in an application. If you're doing those ahead of time, they're going to find out what the main reason is for that call. You want to utilize that, study it, make sure you're aware of exactly why they're going through that and why they're talking to you. Now, if you don't do an application, no big deal. You'll typically find out at that point when you're figuring out the history of what's going on. So this is where you get that opportunity to dig in to what they're going through. If they have it on their application, great, but don't take that as, oh, I know exactly what they're going through now. Always discover that on the call still. You just, it's just a little insight of what you're, what you're going out there and what you're looking at in your prospect's point of view. That's all the application does if you find out in your application ahead of time. Don't be complacent on finding that out. There's a lot of people out there that go and say, oh, I know his problem. I'm going to assume all this <clears throat> and then just go with it from there. They'll never do that. It might, it might be a totally different problem for all you know. Maybe they don't understand the source of the problem and you will at that point. I'm moving this over here. I keep looking down there. All right, so... Uh, so that's what complaint is. It's the problem that they're going through. H is for history. What's the history of their company? What's the history of their business? How long has this problem been going on, this sort of thing? Uh, you know, you're going to dig in a lot at this point and seeing the whole structure of what they do, what their offer is, how they help other clients, and then overall seeing what you're going to find out the foundational basis of that problem, essentially, during the history portion, and then the end game goal of what they're trying to do. So now... It's a little bit different than assessment. Assessment, you're almost doing something similar, but you're going to be digging during the assessment. So history, you're kind of getting a high-level overview of who they are, what they're going through, and what they're trying to resolve. Pretty much what that, that's essentially what history is. Now, assessment, you're going to be diving deeper into that. Okay, This is when you're digging into those questions. What's really going on? What are the solutions they've tried in the past? Have they tried working with anybody else in the past? Did it succeed or did it not succeed? Why or why not? What did they like about it, whether it succeeded or not? You know, what are certain things that they're looking at that they thought was really good that they'd like to implement from what they've tried? Or are they currently trying to do it on their own, which is a big thing. Like, so they think they can do it on their own, then that's going to make you irrelevant. And you want to make sure you nail that in the butt of why they shouldn't do it on their own. So this is where you find out all sorts of key things. And I have an example, a chart for that we'll go over later. It really digs in on how to do all that. So, but that's what assessment is. You're really just digging in, analyzing, and figuring out what's going on. Problems how the problems are affecting them, how it's affecting their business if it's B2B, how it's affecting the people around them, their employees if they're B2B, their family if it's B2C, friends, themselves personally, and then what's that stem source of the problem that's causing all this? What's that big domino, if you will, that knocked out all those other problems down the road? So that's what assessment goes through. Reframe. Reframe is very important. A lot of people forget to do this. At the end of you asking questions, during that discovery, it's great you got all this information, now, you want to use the exact words that your prospect used to tell them what they're going through, how long it's been going through, what they've tried, why they aren't successful with what they've tried, and then stating the reason for the call was because they are actually ready to move forward and figure out how to solve this problem. And then even clarify at the very end, so you feel this is the right time to actually move forward from a time perspective, from a financial perspective, from whatever source that they're coming to you from, this is the right time to move forward, you feel like. And then, just, you know, clarify that, obviously. Um, that's reframe. Super important. And then ask them if you're on point with what you stated, if there's anything missing, and move forward to the treatment. Treatment is the final portion. Treatment is going to be exactly that solution that solves their pain. You're treating their problem. That's why it's called treatment. But anyways, uh, so yeah, you're going to treat it. It's when you start your pitch. 
that's when you transition to it and you start it. Um, the transition is important. Make sure you do it really well to the point where you feel like they're in line, they're meshing together with you, that, that lingo, that vibe is going through really well, and keep them in line. Don't just say, okay, cool, we're going to go right into the pitch. I'm going to word vomit all over you. Don't do that. Make sure you're going through the features. You're going through, not the features, but the actual benefits of how those problems are being solved. When you do that, then you'll actually get to the whole point where you're interacting with them. The biggest problem people do is they're actually going in there and they're just talking constantly on what they do, not even realizing that they're not interacting with that prospect. And the pitch, you might have them from the discovery, like, oh, this dude understands me. But in the pitch, if you start doing that and you just word vomit, you don't interact with them, you're going to lose them. It's been, it's, there's been studies out there that show if you talk more than 30 seconds straight, you literally lose, the, I think it's like like 78% or something like that, of your, your audience's attention. And it's very easy to talk longer than 30 seconds. These videos, you know, they do really well. But the, the Loom videos I'm talking about. But there are going to be people that have to constantly scroll back, scroll back, scroll back, because they forgot what I just said previously because they zoned out. That's in reality, too. You're talking to somebody, interact with them, ask them questions. Like, does that make sense? Are you following along? Is this something that you're, you've tried implementing that you, you talk, told me about earlier, but kind of crash and burn? Is, is, is that exactly what you're talking about? And, you know, clarify questions like that. And it's okay to say things like that. You crash and burn. Let them know, hey, you tried, but you didn't succeed. Uh, anyway, so that's the whole point of during the pitch. You want to interact with them. Don't just, again, don't just word vomit and talk 20 minutes straight. One of the worst things you could possibly do because you're going to lose them at the end of the conversation. So what am I looking at again? You know, I'm sure a lot of you rented that. Anyways, so, and the other thing too, if you do word vomit all over them, what's going to happen is they're not going to see the value. And now, during the objection handling phase, you're typically going to have to fight the uncertainty as well as the value of what you do. And that's simply because you didn't interact with them. Simple process like that, it keeps them in line. It's like, think about like when you're, you're in class, right? Back, let's, let's think back in the high school days. For you youngins watching it, that might have been yesterday. For people like me, it might have been 18 years ago. But uh, think about it from that perspective. You're in class, you're, you're dozing off. What happens when a teacher calls your name? Like, Jonathan, do you know the answer to that? And you're like, whoa, uh, yeah. And you, you zone right back in real quick, right? It's because they're calling on you. They're interacting with you. And then you, you hyper-focus for like the next five minutes before dozing off again, you know? Um, same concept. Same exact concept. So just keep that in mind. Now, that's pretty much what the chart method is overall. And again, this is just an overview. This is just an overview of everything. We're going to go super into detail later. Uh, there's another chart in here where we dive heavy, heavy, heavy into examples on how to do everything, all right? But for now, just come in here, study this process, make sure you have it understood. If you have any questions on that, feel free to let me know, leave some comments, everything of that nature. And then if you like this whole, the whole concept of this and you want to learn some more, feel free to DM me. I'll be happy to help you out on streamlining this a lot better for what it is you do more specifically. And again, for the video itself, you'll you like it, share it, do that fancy stuff they do on social media, whatever, share it around, subscribe, all that good stuff, it'd be cool. But um, other than that, everybody, peace out.